Welcome back to my shop. This is the last installment of my uh, four part series on how to turn a jumper. As you can see, uh, I don't normally do this, uh, this uh, kind of uh, introduction, personal introduction to my videos, but since this is the last chapter, I thought it might be the appropriate moment to tell you how I came about turning a jambe. A djembe. Uh, a very good friend and a fellow turner called uh, Cyrus Fillmore, or Cy Fillmore. Uh, we talked about um, a couple of things uh, a few months ago, I think it was uh, I don't know, six or seven months ago. And uh, we came to talk about uh, making drums on the lathe and he casually mentioned that he used to make drums and everything uh, which was an understatement because he used to make amazing job doing those uh, drums and uh, I urged him uh, that for my sake and everyone's sake he should uh, make a, a series of videos explaining how to create a drum under the pretense that uh, I want to make one myself and uh, his, his tutorial would be very beneficial to me. So he actually went out and uh, did it and came out with a very, very, very nice series of uh, videos about making these drums and uh, obviously I watched them eagerly and in order to show a uh, side that I'm a man of my word, uh, I've been uh, preparing to turn this drum for a while now. I went out and uh, took some uh, welding lessons with a cousin of mine who does this professionally and uh, he, taught, he taught me how to weld and I've made these two rests up there as you can see and as uh, obviously you've seen in, uh, my, in my videos so I made that two rest, uh, that steady rest specifically for this project and obviously for any future projects that will need it and the time has come and I found the right log so I just took the leap of faith that this uh, series of videos would be worth showing my uh, audience and uh, I think it came out pretty well. Obviously I will put a link down in the description of the video to Sai's uh, channel and uh, please visit him, uh, subscribe to his channel, he does amazing work, he, he turns uh, balls and uh, forms and drums and his sculpture and he does really really nice work all around so go visit his channel down in the description and uh, tell him I said hi. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video. Well, it took about an hour and a half, but the, the foot of the drum is completely hollow. It actually went a lot faster than I expected. Let me just gauge you the depth. I'll use this gouge. Okay, so the depth, let's use a ruler. So, let's see, this goes all the way in, as you can see. So we're talking about 20, almost almost 27 centimeters while our foot is actually 27 and a half centimeters so I'm just at the bottom of the connection between the foot and the bell of the drum uh, the hollowing went a lot faster than I expected because uh, and in the end I've used mostly this uh, ring tool uh, I do need a bigger one, I need a longer one and a thicker one if I want to do future projects I could use a, a longer uh, tool rest, so I could uh, move more, in, uh, work better inside, and it's something I do. I do have the possibility to construct myself, and I will do it. So I made a small recess here, as you can see, just to straighten this out, because now the plan is to switch this over, mount this this part on a jam chuck that I hope would be very very tight. 
and try to set up my my bell, the bell of the drum, on the on the steady rest. Hopefully it will work and start following from that side also until I reach the connecting point. One no. small thing I want to show you, so I'll take you by hand to excuse my shaky camera work. Okay. I've heard some concerns about the knot that everyone's seen here. So it is a small knot, but more than the knot itself, it's just a sap pocket. A really large sap pocket which I I uh, tr I started to clean out and uh, yes this will uh, present as a whole as a whole while I hollow out the the bell of the drum I see it more of an, oppo an opportunity to cast some some epoxy raisin Okay, I've managed to chuck up my uh, drum onto my friction chuck, on my jam chuck, I'm sorry, made here from a, a four, four centimeters wide, uh, which is an inch and a half wide uh, piece of plywood, and my uh, steady rest is all set up and ready. It's very, very, almost unnoticeably a little bit of center, wobbles a little bit, but nothing I can't handle. There's uh, this little sap pocket that I'm going, I'm going to have to be very careful while hollowing this part so I wouldn't get a bad catch on it. And then I'll decide uh, what to do, maybe uh, probably fill this up with epoxy. I'm considering doing this now and then let it, let it cure for a few hours. See you to my man. 
Okay, this is an update about the progress of hollowing this uh, this bell part of the jambe in the jambe, and I am pretty far in. Let me just show you. So I'm a good 22 centimeters in, which is uh, I don't know how many inches that is. 22 centimeters in. That's eight and three quarters in eight inch and three quarter in and for the past few hours I've been really fighting against this because if you can see I've got one two three eyes here which are actually very very hard compared to the other parts of the wood so while I'm peeling away the material it creates a chatter because it's hard for the cutting tool to cut through the eye and then it moves to a softer wood and then another hard, hard eye and so it jumps from eye to eye and creates a lot of chatter. Another problem I had to deal with <coughs> is that my two rest can't go all the way in like I did from the other side because of because of the of the steady rest which in, which simply won't allow me to move forward and uh, with my uh, tool rest so I wanted to show you the fix I did for the sap pocket as you can see I filled it in with uh, epoxy and shavings and then I while it's turning I ground it down with a wood file so now it's nice and flush and obviously it would look much better once uh, I'll do the finish cuts on it when it's completely dry and the finish will come over it some kind of oil but as you can see that pretty much closed it up completely it's very nice okay back to work Okay, now the drum, the drum is off the lathe and I'm going to give it a quick treatment. I got some wax that I've uh, melted here inside, inside a double boiler. It's a uh, pure beeswax, smells like honey. And I'm going to cover all the end grain parts inside and outside the drum so those parts will not dry quicker and create cracks. Okay, so for your first look, here is the completed shell. I hope you can hear me well because I'm quite away from the camera. This is the general shape. This here, this is a sacrificial ring which I will eventually cut off. I used it only so I'd be, I would be able to mount this large of a drum on my steady rest. So this will be chopped off but it's not urgent there we go let me show you the the foot here in the center and the bell and this is 
is not, it's not light, it's quite heavy, and I'll show you exactly how heavy. I just was able to puke, procure this. weighs 9.76 kilos which is 21.3 pounds I don't think it's very heavy but to me it feels heavy and oh, well, supposed to turn off Again, this is 10 kilos of, of a jumbo shell, jumbo shell, and uh, so right at this point, the only thing that's left to do is cover this up in a couple of uh, bags and put a date on it and the weights. to leave this to dry for a couple of months, maybe more. I will uh, do humidity tests on it and uh, once it is at 15% or less humidity then I will uh, finish it up. And then we'll also put on the skin, we'll string it, we'll tune it. And I got this period of time, these uh, two, three, four months, how many months it's going to take to arrive at the right level of humidity. This time I will uh, use it to learn more about how to skin the drum, how to make the metal rings to hold the skin of the drum, how to string and all the ties and those uh, parts of the drum and how to tune it. And uh, hopefully in, in the end when it is uh, all done I will also uh, learn a little bit about how to play it well. So, I know it's been long and tiring, but this is the end for this project for now. I hope you enjoyed watching me fight this piece of wood on my lathe for the past week and a half or so. And uh, I hope to see you back here in my shop very soon.